So this is the 2016 Probability Concepts exam and we're doing question 2C. Each observer also records whether each shopper has young children with them, buys any products on the shelf and how long the shopper spends at the supermarket. Of the 435 shoppers observed in the most recent study, and then we're told a bunch of stuff. The goal of the problem is probably a good thing to read next before we worry about all the details because if you start by reading all the details it can get a wee bit overwhelming. So let's be, let's be clear on the goal first. So it's usually at the end. So a shopper is selected at random from the study and we've been asked to calculate the probability that the shopper did not have young children with them, did not buy any products on the shelf and did not spend more than 30 minutes at the supermarket. Okay, so that's the goal. Now we need to be thinking about diagrams here, because in probability, um, to calculate a probability in a situation with lots of details, a diagram makes it way easier. So we need to decide which sort of diagram we're going to use here. So I've just whipped together a bit of a flow chart, which is unfortunately hard to read, but it is a good guide for which sort of diagram to use. So the first question is, are there two category variables or three category variables? If there's two category variables, you're either using a two-way table or a tree diagram. Then you have to ask yourself, are all the numbers either counts, that's just numbers, or proportions, but of the total? And if that's the case, then you can use a two-way table. But if some of the numbers are actually conditional probabilities, which means that they're out of a subgroup, then you need to use a tree diagram. If we have three category variables, then you're either using a three-way Venn diagram or a tree diagram. And the same rules then apply. If all the numbers are counts or proportions of the total, then you can use a three-way Venn diagram and that will be the easiest way. But if there are, if some of the numbers are conditional probabilities, that means out of a subgroup, again you have to use a tree diagram. So, quick summary, two, if there's two category variables, you're either using a two-way table or a tree diagram. Three category variables, it's either a three-way Venn diagram or a tree diagram. You have to use a tree diagram only if some of the numbers in the question are conditional probabilities. So if we stick to that guide, we'll do pretty well in these exams, in the probability concepts exam. Um, so here, we've got three category variables. We've got, first of all, whether, the, whether each shopper has young children, we'll call that C. Secondly, we've got whether the shopper buys any products on the shelf. So we'll call that B for buyers. And thirdly, we've got how long the shopper spends, and it's, and it's whether they spend more than 30 minutes or not. And so we'll call that one L for long. So long means more than 30 minutes. So we've got three category variables. Now we're either going to be using a three-way Venn diagram or a tree diagram. Only use a tree diagram if we have to, because three-way Venn is going to be easier. And so we only have to use a tree diagram if there's conditional probabilities given in the question. So if we go back to the question, let's look at the numbers. So notice how all of these numbers here, they're all counts, they're just how many. So none of them are conditional probabilities. They're not even probabilities, but they're certainly not conditional ones. And we're told that it's out of 435 shoppers. So therefore, we're going to use a three-way Venn diagram because in our diagram, in our flow diagram, we are here. Three category variables and all the numbers are counts. So we're going to start by drawing our three circles inside, a, inside what we call our sample space. Sample space in a Venn diagram is the rectangle that it's drawn in like this, it's this sample space, then we're going to have our three circles. It pays to make them quite big, 
So there's lots of overlap zone and we can see what we're doing. So we've got one, two, three. And our three category variables are whether they have children or not, C, whether they buy products from the shelf or not, that's B for buy, and whether they stay a long time, more than 30 minutes, which we call L for long. So we're going to put those titles in. We also know that it's out of 435 shoppers. So sample space is a total of 435, and I'm going to write that down. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to draw these up and then have a go at filling in the regions inside this using the numbers. Now when you've done that, hit play again on the video and see how you went. Or if you get really stuck. Okay, one of the good things about these questions is they are quite similar from year to year. So if you do practice them, then they are an easy path to merit or excellence. If you don't practice them, well then that would be silly, wouldn't it? So it's worth going to a textbook, so like Sigma or New Lake or whatever else you use, Walker Maths, and, and actually practicing quite a few of these three-way Venn diagram questions, and you will become a bit of a pro. So, firstly we're told that 60 shoppers had young children with them, bought products on the shelf, and spent more than 30 minutes at the supermarket. So what does that mean? Well, it means all three, all three circles, right? So we have 60 people in the overlap of all three of these circles. Okay, what, what are we told next? And so I'm going to tick that off because I've now counted it. Next, we're told 86 shoppers had young children with them and bought products on the shelf. So that means C and, and B. So 86 were in the zone where the C and the B circles overlap. Now, why would it be wrong for me just to go like this and write 86? Because I've seen students do this before. Why is that incorrect? I want you to pause the video and think about why is that incorrect? Well, the reason is because the 86 actually is talking about this entire zone of overlap between the C circle and the B circle. So it includes the 60 we've already counted. So therefore, how many are going to be left to go in this zone here? Hopefully you're thinking of the number 26 right now. Okay, how are we going? So we've got two things ticked off. We want to go through and tick all of these things off so that we're using all of the information. Okay, 62 shoppers bought products on the shelf, so that's B, and spent more than 30 minutes, so that's L. So the overlap of the B and the L circle has 62 in it. So that represents which zone? It represents this zone here. So we already accounted for 60 of those 62. So there are two left to go in here. Okay, how are you doing so far? Hopefully pretty good. Okay, what's next? So we've now dealt with the first three things. So I'm going to tick that off as well. Okay, now the fourth thing. 129 shoppers bought products in this shelf. So that means the B circle for bought has 129 total. So I'm going to write that at the top here. I'm going to write 129, kind of like a title. Now, I've already accounted for 26 plus 60 plus 2. So that equals what? What's 26 plus 60 plus 2? So that is 88, isn't it? So 129 minus 88 is going to give me this zone in here. So what's that? And it's 41. So that must be 41 in here. Okay, what's next? So ticking that off. Okay, 32 shoppers had young children with them, but did not buy any products from the shelf, and did not spend 30 minutes at the supermarket. Or more than 30 minutes. So that means that had young children with them, so C, but not B, nor L. So let's find that on here. So C, but not either of the other two circles. It must be this zone in here, mustn't it? Okay. Nearly there. Okay, if you haven't had a go yet, see if you can do the rest yourself. 
154 shoppers had young children with them, so that means that the, the total for the C circle is 154. And we want to split that between those 1, 2, 3, 4 regions. So what number is going to go in here? You work it out. And it should be 36. Okay, and nearly there now. We've got one point bullet point to go. 14 shoppers spent more than 30 minutes at the supermarket, so that's L, but did not have young children, so but not C, and did not buy products from the, from the shelf. So L but not C, nor B. So that means just this region in here, and that is 14. Okay, now the question says, because we've dealt with all the information now. Question says, calculate the probability that the shopper did not have young children, did not buy any products from the shelf, and did not spend longer than 30 minutes. So therefore, that is what? Which part of our diagram? Well, it's everything outside of the three circles. So all we need to do now is what? We simply need to subtract all of these numbers off the total, which is 435. An easy but tedious task, isn't it? And you should get 224. So the question was after the probability out of all of the shoppers, so that means it's going to be the probability of neither C nor B nor L equals 224 out of 435, because that was the total, wasn't it? And that equals 0 0.5149, the four significant figures. Okay, and looking at the marking scheme for that, check we got it right. And yep, and it was actually excellent for this one, um, and you just had to have the correct probability calculated. Um, some years, a question like that would only have been merit, so why it was excellent this year, I'm not sure. Um, Sometimes for, for excellence, they'll give you a question like this and then ask you for the probability that um, if two successive people were chosen, shoppers were chosen at random from this, uh, from this particular um, list of shoppers, what would be the probability that they were both in that category? If they'd asked that, how would you do it? So how you do it, if it's out of 435 shoppers and you wanted two successive ones, um, why would it be wrong? So this is just a question I've made up. So both C nor B nor L for two shoppers. Why would it be wrong to just square that, that probability? Why would we not square it? Have a think about it. Well, the reason is that it would be without replacement. If you chose one, there'd only be 434 left. So the first one would be 224 out of 435 chance. But then the second one that we chose would only be out of 434, and there'd only be 223 left. Okay, so then we would have to multiply those. So 224 out of 435 times 223 out of 434 and we get this number here which would make it a decimal is 0.2646 so that would be if they asked you the, a similar question but said that two shoppers were chosen at random what was the probability that both of them had neither children with them bought for products nor stayed longer than 30 minutes and usually there'd be something like that for excellence. Okay, all right, catch you later.